It may have escaped your radar that Brazilian behemoth Kaise is flying towards his 34th birthday and is thus now firmly among our top division veterans club. This was him almost 12 years ago, down in Division 3. And this is him now, with some 52 top division tournaments under that huge belt of his. As you can see, he's filled out his 6 foot 4 inch frame an awful lot. He's been as high as Seki Wake in his time, but left calf, right bicep and creaking knee injuries have combined with age to limit his goals to top division survival. Even that looked beyond him for long periods of September 2020. This force-out defeat on day one, followed by a first ever loss to a thinking Kotoshoho on day two. A firm outside left grip on a third Sadagotake man, Koto Eko, gave him a first win on day three. Before an adrenaline fueled Tobizaru and a briefly switched on Ichi no Jo dealt him further defeats on subsequent days. Failure to get the outside left on Meisei was another concern initially on day 6, but expert closing down of angles handed him a second win. The next four days brought him two further victories, a phenomenal 13th in a row over Chiyo Taidu, and triumph in his first meeting with Ho Shoryu. He would also win against injured opposition on days 11 and 12, but defeats to Tokushoryu, then Sadano Umi, either side, left him on 6 and 7. A push out of fellow heavyweight Aoyama kept his faint hopes of a winning score alive going into the final day, but the younger and stronger Kagayaki was odds on favourite to dash them. The big Brazilian keeps the exact same top division rank for now, but how much longer can his limbs really compete at this level? Thirty-six-year-old Shaw Horzan, seen here losing to Kaise on day twelve, insisted there was nothing obviously wrong with his sumo in September, but even he couldn't conceal the fact his once feared thrusts were distinctly lacking in power. As he lost his first eight bouts, it seemed as if his right foot was unwilling to carry too much weight. But that's just a guess. True, he was paired with some talented youngsters who will take some stopping. But his failure to compete with fellow thruster Chiyo Tadyu would have alarmed him. The opposition really got easier in the second week, with even worse injured Ishiura, Kotoshogiku, and Ikioi of Division 2 scarce able to compete. Out of sorts Nishikigi also stepped up from Division 2 to face him and lose, meaning his win of the tournament undoubtedly came against Enho on day 11, when his movement was faultless. He thus brought his score back to 5-10, the 10th loss being this one to Shimano Umi on day 13, but did nowhere near enough to preserve his top division standing. 31 defeats from 45 consign him to Division 2 for the first time since 2015. He won the title at that level last time he was there, 
but such feats are surely way beyond him now. Turning 34 last week was Mio Giryu, the oldest top division man to hail from Saitama Sakae. He's always been a flying starter in bouts with that sharp and accurate Tachi Ai, and now he's a flying starter in tournaments, winning his first three bouts in both July and September. But after his loss to Yutakayama on day 4, the quality of opposition rose exponentially, and he lost 6 out of 7 to the likes of Takakesho, Asanoyama, Takanosho, Champion Shodai, Mitake Umi, and July winner Teruno Fuji. Days 12 and 13 brought a welcome return to fighting middle ranked foes, Koto Eko unable to block the throat hold, and Tamawashi easily breached beneath the armpits. But two more tastes of dirt on the final weekend meant he lost nine of his final twelve. Saitama Sakai's knee specialist and fitness coach Satoshi Okatake rates this veteran's conditioning as second to none. Even if the upper ranks are now a bridge too far, Miyogiryu can likely give us two more years in Division 1.